All right, next to me, this is his home base. He's a really funny guy. Give him some love. Kenny Warren, a.k.a. Alex Buckley. Y'all give it up for ourselves one time. Y'all been a great crowd. I heard you guys clap with the people, even when they wasn't fun. I heard that shit. All right, so my name is Kenny Warren, a.k.a. The Average Black Man. And I'm from Portland, Oregon. And people always ask me the same thing. It's black people in Portland? <laughs> Hell no, I left. <laughs> so, you know, Portland is a, it's, it's, it's 2% black. So, you know, I grew up with a lot of white friends. And that's cool, you know what I mean? It's, a, it's okay. And I'll never forget the first time I went to one of my white friends' house. We was playing Atari, so that lets you know how old I am. <laughs> and his mom came in and was like, put the game away, finish your homework, and you guys can get back to the game when you're done. And my boy looked at his mom and was like, oh, fuck, mom, you're a bitch. <laughs> I was like, white people get to talk to their parents like that? <laughs> so I went back to my mom. I was like, mom, you won't believe this. But this white kid told his mom, oh, fuck, mom, you're a bitch. And she was like, boy, if you ever talk to me like that, I will beat the black off of you. And I was like, well, then I'll be white. And by law, I only get time out. And even though I'm black, my dad was there for me, you know? He, was there. he coached my basketball, he coached my baseball teams, but he was a hippie. And it was embarrassing. Because you know, the, the coach always has to give kids a ride home. And before they even got to the house, he'd just fire up a doobie. <laughs> and I'm slinking down in the seat like Dee. And I never won too many games of the dozens and stinging, you know, when kids talk about each other's parents because they always had a go-to joke. And it was Catholic school that I went to with a bunch of white kids. And they always said the same thing. Yeah, that's why your dad called timeout so we can smoke a joint. <laughs> and it hurt. It hurt. Because I knew it was true. I knew it was true. And my mom, my mom, she was there. She was solid foundation for me, you know what I mean? She fed me, she kept me clean, but she had questionable boyfriends. I could, I'll never forget from the ages of eight to 11, she had a, bar, a, a boyfriend from Barbados. And then he always talked about Kingston and Jamaica for some reason, I don't know. His name was Michael Anthony Peter Sylvester Montgomery McCook. No hyphenations. And he acted like a different one of those dudes every day. Him and his friends, all the Jamaicans and Bayesians, they used to come over and drink and get, just get drunk. And I was a little kid. You know, I'd be sleeping, and they'd come wake me up. Wake up, little Ken, wake up. And I'd be like, ah, wake up, little Ken, wake up. Come dance for us. And I'd be like, I don't want to dance for y'all. I don't. And then the, the, the Barbazian dude would always be like, the Rise got Bumba Clyde dance like Michael Jackson. And then they'd let me go back to sleep. And they'd keep drinking all night long and every party ended the same way with somebody getting stabbed. That was the idea of having a good weekend. So I moved to New York in 2004, and I started working at this barbershop up in Spanish Harlem. And I'll never forget, now I'm fresh from Oregon. I had this kid in the chair, he's moving around, he's grabbing the clippers, I'm sweating. And the mom saw it in me, she came over and was like, you have to be patient with him, you know? He's autistic. So I'm fresh from Oregon, we, we still on retarded. <laughs> I said, autistic? I don't want him to draw me a picture, I just want him to be still. <laughs> the barbershop, you get all types of characters coming through there all the time anyway. You know, I remember I had this fly Harlem dude, he's a, he's, a, he's a drug dealer, but he thinks, you know, if I listen to the Jay-Z Reasonable Doubt album, front to back, I can hustle and never get caught. <laughs> 
So two years later, when he came back from his vacation to an island, <laughs> Rikers Island, I had to ask him, man, was your CD scratch? <laughs> and then we got people that like to come through the barbershop and sell stuff all the time. We got one guy, we call him the Cologne Man. <laughs> He never has what we want. <laughs> you got Isamiyaki? No. You got Polo Black? No. Well, what do you got? Proudly. He held up a bottle of insurrection. I had to say pause. Because I heard insert and I heard erection. So I told him, bring the bottle over here, man. Let me check this out, see what's going on. So he brings the bottle over to me, and I take a look, and I see that it's a male enhancement spray on. <laughs> now, I'm one of those dudes that like to spray my cologne on profusely. You know what I mean? If you're on the same train as me, you're like, oh, that guy, he smells like Gucci Guilty Sticks. <laughs> you know? I'm just saying, I remember one day, I, was, I used to have a train ride from Bay Ridge to the city, and it was this... Asian lady sitting beside me, and I mean, she was going like, oh, God. And I was like, you stink. <laughs> but you think about it, though, like, me spraying on my cologne on profusely like that. Now, just think if I would have just took his word for it and sprayed that male enhancement all over my neck. Oh, I mean, you know, I'm here. I'm here with it. I'm shh, shh. I probably would have woke up in the morning with a stiff neck and cauliflower ear. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to tell you something. He has competition, though. He has competition. We got a, a Muslim brother that comes through the shop with, with Muslim oils, which they use for like a cologne or perfume, and porn. <laughs> a Muslim dude with porn and oils. It kind of goes together because you can use the oil while you're watching porn. You know? But it's only fitting we gave him the nickname Butt Naked My Brother. Yeah, he, he pretty much put my whole porn collection together since 05. I, I took my hat to him. I just don't like that if I catch him on 125th and Lennox by the mosque, and I'm like, well, butt naked, you got anything for me? He like, excuse me, my brother, I think you got me mistaken. <laughs> I don't do that. <laughs> I'm just saying. Now, we don't have any type of human resources or anything at the barbershop, so we talk about everything and everybody. Midgets, white people, black people, Asian people, people in wheelchairs. It, it, it don't matter. I, like, wheelchair people, they very disrespectful. I wouldn't mind kicking one of them in the middle of that. Uh, rolled over my foot. One of the guys came in the shop one day, he was on crutches, and uh, one of the barbers was like, you know, what, what's up, man, what happened? I thought maybe he hurt himself, you know, he, he was on crutches. And uh, the kid was like, well, I had to get my meniscus removed. And one of the barbers beside me was like, you can't have kids? <laughs> I was like, man, yo, yo. The meniscus is in the knee. The meniscus is in the knee. And like I said, we, we talk about gay dudes all the time. All the time. Unless they there. Because I got this gay dude that I cut. He looked like he should be on the line for the Giants. He's big as hell. He came in the shop the other day with some Chinese flip-flops and a French manicure on his toes. A French manicure on his toes? And didn't nobody say shit while he was in there. He got 11 barbers. I know somebody had an opinion. And 
And I ain't gonna lie, one barber asked him, is that a French manicure? He was like, yeah, it's a French manicure. It felt good when I got it, too. My toes was like, err. <laughs> Damn, that was so sweet. <laughs> so when he left, we started talking about him again. <laughs> we did. And what we were talking about was that the fact that it's a no-win situation if you get into it with a gay dude. If you whoop his ass, you're going to jail. That's gay bashing. <laughs> if he whoop your ass, he might kiss you. <laughs> Worst case scenario, he knock you the fuck out, you wake up in a strange room, he's sitting on the edge of the bed winking at you. <laughs> I'ma leave y'all with this, cause he flashed the light on me. I was on the internet, and I was reading about this, uh, this guy in Africa, he had six wives, right? And they was getting fed up with the shit. They like, nah, this is 2012, this is some bullshit. So they lured him over to one of their house, and all of them raped him. Yeah, they raped him. One by one, they made him have sex with all the wives, and when he got to wife number four, he died. What a martyr. That dude is my hero. I wouldn't have went out any other way. I'm Kenny Warren, the average black man.